Hey kids, Damien Miles, Hollywood 101 show here, live in Portland, Oregon. Excuse me, guys. Um, we're, excuse me. Okay. All right. Are you? Excuse me. Can we just have silence? We're just about to record. Thank you. Okay. On three. One, two, three. Hey kids, Damien Miles, Hollywood 101 show here, live in Portland, Oregon, at the famous Hollywood Theater. And we're about to interview one of MGM's most famous and fierce and flawless beauties, Miss Margaret O'Brien, icon and legend. Here we are, she's about to share some of her knowledge with us to transfer to you young people. So, here she is. Thank you. So <laughs> nice to see you. So nice. My goodness. So nice to have you here, Miss O'Brien. Flowers here. We are just so utterly thrilled. To have you. Very nice. And, thank um, you so much. Thank you so very much for receiving us. Oh, well, I'm very happy to be seeing you and being here. Oh, well, these are beautiful. Just lovely. Yes. So I'm going to hold them like this. Um, yes, for anything you mean, mean, like, darling. And um, here we have um, a little Valentine for you. Oh, yes, this is our Valentine special lovely. with you. We know girls love chocolates. Thank you so <laughs> and, um, much. Yes. Those are for you to enjoy any time later tonight. And. Um, as you know, I know that you love bling, so this oh is my, my own little personal Valentine's gift for you oh, for later. And, yes. um, thank you so much. Thank you, darling, for being so gracious and kind and sharing your time with us here at Hollywood oh, 101. This is beautiful. Thank you. Um, I thought I'd open up the interview by um, asking you about the late great king of Hollywood, Mr. Mickey Rooney. I know you were both friends. Yes, we were very dear friends. I, I knew Mickey when I was four years old on the on the MGM lot. Of course, he was older than I was, but um, he was always very sweet to me. And he was the only one I allowed to call me Maggie instead of Margaret. And then, of course, through the years, I would see Mickey uh, very often. And then on the last, about the last three years, we even became close, closer. And he'd go out to dinner with us, in fact, uh, on St. Patrick's Day, which was two years ago. We went to a wonderful restaurant called the Tam Shatter, where they have the Irish music, and Mickey just loved that. He had such a wonderful time. And he was um, actually, looked like he was in great health, so uh, he didn't suffer from any illness. Yes, and that worked. was a, a miracle. That yes, and worked right until the end of his and life. Yes, we did a movie together. Um, just uh, before he passed away, and he loved being on the set. He always loved being in front of the camera. I didn't know that. What was the film? Yes, um, uh, Dr. Jekyll. It was a takeoff on Dr. Jekyll. Really? Oh, I'm so yes. excited to see it. Um, and that should be out. Oh, of course, you never know when they're coming out because they have to do the editing and everything. Yes, yes. But uh, Vicky loved doing the film, and he was wonderful. You know, all of his lines. Um, yes. You know, at, at his age, because he was. 90, he, um, he knew the script right, off, right, right, right then and there, and he could say every word, and uh, knew just what to do in front of the camera, as he always did. Yes, so he showman. never lost any of that talent through the years. Yes, yes, sharp as a tack. Yes. You know, I met him back in, um, I believe it was uh, 91 at Chillafest back east. Really? And, um, he was very, very kind to me and received me very, very well. And he gave me his handbook for the kids. He said, always be professional, always have fun, and remember, all glory is fleeting. And um, I'll never forget him being so kind to me. And he, he, he gave me a big, a big hug. Person, and, yes. um, you know, he was just great, you know. And of course, we, we spoke about uh, uh, kids studying the past back in Palm Springs. And I was just wondering if you would you know, reiterate that to our young people about what's important in the industry if you're looking to make good. Oh, if, if you're getting started in the industry, um, it's it's not an industry for sissies yes. because it can be uh, difficult and there can be many disappointments, but you have to still um, go on if you lose a part. Uh, and it doesn't always mean if you go on an audition that it wasn't that they didn't like you. 
It could be that you just didn't fit in with the other actor that they had, yes. uh, that they wanted a different look. So you should get discouraged or disappointed. Yes, and not take it personally. Exactly. And also, one of, I think, the most important things is to know the history of Jim. Yes. To know all of the history going back to the beginning of film, because that gives you um, a wonderful insight into the different ways of acting, uh, different actors, different actresses, and you can learn from that. You can take a little bit from one actor and a little bit from another actor yes. and put it together in your own way. Yes, and, history and matters. And you do have to know all the history, and, and sometimes I don't think people take the time to yes. know that. And also, um, all the films today, you have to keep up on films and television and series, because you learn from each thing that you watch. And of course, if you get a chance to, even if it's a small part, uh, be in a film or be on stage, uh, learn from the different directors. Yes, of course. Because each one has a different style, a different way of uh, teaching you how to say a line or, or give you the insight to a character. And I. I think learning from the different directions is some of the greatest learning that you can have in the business if you're fortunate enough to get yes. a chance, even if it's a small part. Don't yes, there is no small part in Hollywood. There is right. no small part, it's what you make exactly. of it. Exactly, it's what you make of it. And learning. Yes. It's like apprenticing, you're learning. And do as much stage as you can. Uh, even though you're maybe backstage and they're teaching you about sets and lighting, it gives you um, another insight into the business. So that's sort of my, my take for young people. Thank you so much for and sharing to read, that advice. to read books. Yes, yes, yes. And you had mentioned that this was something Spencer Tracy had told you young kids when he was, you know, talking back in the day yes, about studying course. the past. Absolutely. To um, Did you know him well? I, I didn't do a film with Spencer Tracy, but I had met him many times yes, yes. at the studio and knew him. And he, uh, he was amazing because he could just uh, be sitting and having a lunch and not taking it all seriously and then going in and doing a wonderful dramatic scene. Yes, yes. He like, just had that natural talent. Right, right. You know, so, to be um, very calm and not to get all nervous. You know, take it very easy and enjoy it. Enjoy it, what you're doing. Yes. You know, I have to say, I, as a child myself, when I watched you in The Phantom mm -hmm. Ghost with Charles Law, honestly, you know, to be the tender age that you were, and to hold your own as the female lead in that film was really just a remarkable thing. And it was so funny and cute and adorable. I loved working with and, him. And, and what was it that they called Robin Young in that movie? Was it Cuffy? Cuffy. It was Cuffy. Cuffy. I remember that moment where you were kicking something or banging something yes. and yelling at him to step up and Get, Not that be a coward, coward, get the yes. courage he needed to do it, and then he drove the bomb off the cliff. Yes, and it was just such an, it must have been such a great film to make. But um, I, I thought what you and Charles Long he was just. He was terribly and funny in that movie and adorable, wasn't he? And, and he would worry about it. I loved working with him because he treated me like an adult actress. Yes. And was worried if I was doing better and, oh, is she stealing my scene? And well, did I do all right? He'd go to Robert Young, and Robert Young said, yeah, she looked, you have yeah. a great costume, you come in as the ghost, don't worry about it. I mean, How and then amazing. we would go back and forth and worry if one was doing better than the other, and I loved working with him for that, yes, and having the competition. He was an incredible actor, but you know, the thing about you was is that you were one of those rare young people who was, in fact, a great actress. You were a great actress as a young person, and you were able to hold your own. And, and you know, I clearly see that as I watch the movies. You know, my girlfriend and assistant, Miss Cherry Bubbles, who's been texting me all day with information about you and photographs of you. And she sent me three of the most beautiful photographs of you and Judy Garland from Meet Me in St. Louis. One where you're with the top hat oh, and yes. the whole thing and doing the, the yes. song and dance. And Absolutely. one where you're wrapped over the back of her shoulder. And yes. another one that I guess was done for press, 
we were cheek to cheek together. Yes. And it was just so adorable. And you know, a lot of people always thought that Judy was a very serious person. But she wasn't. She was a lot of fun. Was she a lot of fun? And she enjoyed jumping rope with the yeah. kids. Yeah. And she loved being around the kids. And uh, she was a very, really happy person uh, when people let her be happy. Yeah, she was fundamentally um, yes. a triple threat. And, and, and go on to just do what she was Absolutely. doing, you know. And of course, such a talent. Not unlike yourself, my dear. A great actress well, and I think one of the beauty. greatest performances um, was Judy Garland in The Star is Born. Yes. Because she could do everything. She, of course, we know how wonderful her voice was, yes. but she could dance, she could be funny, she could be dramatic. So she did. She, she really had it all. And you, you had told me um, back in Palm Springs that she was perfectly darling, she sweet. Was. And that was so nice for the kids to know. And of course, in Meet Me in St. Louis, making that movie, she was very happy because uh, she was engaged to Vincent Minnelli. Yes, Vincent Minnelli. And he watched, didn't overwork her. Um, like, sometimes a studio, you know, overworked Judy. And he, he wouldn't. I mean, we'd be there on the set at nine, and he would stop at six. So she loved doing that movie. Yes, and yes. It was a fun movie. And I believe that was Liza Minnelli's screen debut. Yes, it was, absolutely. And um, so Judy always said that because of Vincent, because he, he had an input on all parts of the movie. Yes, I'm sure. He Great knew art very director. much about that Victorian era. Yes. So he would do a lot of the set decorations, he'd tell the set designer, oh no, the chandelier should be this way. Yes. And some of Judy's makeup. And Judy always said she thought she was the most beautiful in that movie. Yes, she was absolutely gorgeous. And she was absolutely And had come beautiful. into her own and had become a young yes. woman and just absolutely. remarkable. So, so it was fun. Yes, I'm, I'm so glad that you've had such an incredible career and have been so blessed. You. And you know, Hollywood and all of us, we just adore you. Oh, and that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Um, I was very lucky to have a mother that saw that I was protected. Yes, and, uh, and that you were so incredibly talented. Advantage. So I had a wonderful life. I really, you know, people have said, um, did you miss things by having children to play with? No, no, not really, because what people don't realize, there's always another little girl on the set with you. Yes. And that's your little stand-in who would go in and stand under the light to be lit. They had to have the lighting. And she would be there in my clothes and the braids and be under the lights. And then she'd go back to the little schoolhouse and then I'd go in and do the I've scene. I've heard about this I'd little schoolhouse that you and yes. Vicki and Ronnie McDowell and no. Freddie Mark Bartholomew. Well, actually, I had a private tutor. Vicki was before me in the school. Oh, oh, I see. He, he, that was time before. Um, but I had really a tutor, but on the set, I would go to school with my stand-in. Yes. And my stand-in was Maureen. I hear you still, still know her, and you're still today. friends today. Yes, yes I And Randy her told father me. was head of props at MGM. He's the one that um, had the ruby slippers that Judy wore in Wizard of Oz. He's the one that, um, in Little Women, set up all the dining table. And oh, Elizabeth wow. and I love the popover, so we would eat wow. them and he'd go after refill it again. <laughs> but he had fabulous memorabilia. Wow. Really you know, um, thank goodness for Debbie Reynolds for saving that MGM prop house. Yes. What a Hollywood heroine she is. That was a fabulous thing that she did. Fabulous thing that she did. So, and it was such a, a pity that she tried so hard to get a museum. Yes, but you know, the Hollywood Museum is opening and all those things will find their way back. I'm so glad because then she did have to have the auction, yes. and I thought they'd be scattered a bit. But you know how things are, you know? All great things come back to their That's home true. eventually. That's true. And, um, you know, so. in closing, I just wanted to say, do you have any particular films that are your own favorites in Hollywood history? In Hollywood history? Of course, I always love Vivian Lee. Yes, I and do And Waterloo Bridge, and that Hamilton woman, of course, Gone with the Wind. And beside Judy, one of the few actresses that I wanted an autograph from was Vivian Lee. But she was not at the studio at that time. Yes. So when I was in London, 
uh, the studio arranged for my mother and I to go backstage when she was doing Antony and Cleopatra at, with Lawrence Olivier, her husband, and have tea. So I had tea with Vivian Lowe. Oh, how wonderful. But I was so in awe that I, I really couldn't speak. I just said, oh, Miss Lee, could I please have your autograph? And Lawrence Olivier was so nice, he came backstage and said, well, do you want my autograph too? And I said, no, I'm not interested in your autograph. I just want Vivian Lee. Can you believe it? Well, I was only 11, so. Wow. Uh, and she gave me her autograph, and I had tea with her. And that was one of the memories for me. How wonderful. And yes. what was it like to actually receive that Academy Award? Well, it was, it was really thrilling. It really was. But of course, I was even more interested in seeing Bob Hope because he was a favorite of mine. My mother used to let me see his movies. So when the Oscar was lost for so many years, uh, I was more thrilled to get it back. The Your Oscar time. was lost? Oh yeah, for 30 years. How, <laughs> how did that happen? Well, my mother gave it to a lady that was in our house to take it home to polish, and she got ill and kind of disappeared. And so did the Oscar. And you found it way to bring it back to you? In the, and it was at the Rose Bowl, and the gentleman who had the Oscar didn't know it was real and was selling it, and his auctioneers came by his car and said, that Oscar's real, we're going to buy it. And they were going to auction it off for a lot of money, but at that time, the studio, I mean, not the studio, but uh, the Academy uh, had decided Oscar's going to be sold. And that's very the appropriate. They should not be able to be sold. So they saw these auctioneers' brochure, and they said, you can't sell this. This is a real Oscar, and it either goes back to Margaret O'Brien, or it goes back to the Thank you. So I'm one of the few people that have been presented at a ceremony the same Oscar twice. Wow. Or the same movie. Wow. So that's and so of course that's Meet that. Me in St. Louis, which they're yeah, playing here today in your St. honor. Louis, at this beautiful theater here in Portland. Incredible. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's, um, I guess, first uh, built in 1925 or 1924. And this lovely young couple have restored it. And it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, as I said, I wouldn't mind working here at all. And it's a, a very appropriate theater uh, to have me in St. Louis. And then, of course, my dear friend, Michael Clark, who has, that's why I love Portland, because they have so much memorabilia. Yes, it's there. such an interesting, beautiful and city. And he has one of the few video shops still here called Movie Madness. And if you ever want to find a film that's very difficult thing to find. In fact, I've given him a couple of names to get for me. He has it in his store. Plus, he has also bought memorabilia and costumes, and he has a whole glass window filled with costumes. He has my uh, dress from Three Wise Fools. Wow. My dress he bought at auction from Jane Eyre. The key from Secret Garden. Oh, yes, I do. God, and that's that a key well. that I, I did not keep a lot of my memorabilia, but that's one thing I want. So one day I'm going to try to get it from Michael because I did want the key from Secret Garden. And then, of course, my mother did buy the coat from the studio, the red coat from Meet Me in St. Louis, and Michael Jackson bought that. Oh, no kidding. Yes, he loved it, so I did eventually sell it to him. And it was kind of an interesting story um, because when he passed away, it went to an, a museum in, uh, I believe it was Sweden, and then, oh no, Belgium, and then my dear friends, um, uh, Darren Julian, Julian Auctions, bought it from there, and then it went up for auction not too long ago. And a man bought it, and then I felt very badly because I still fit. It still fit me. Could you believe that? Yes, I, I tried do. it on, and I could still fit in. It was shorter, but I could fit in my red coat. And then I'm sorry I didn't keep it. Well, you know, I hope it finds its way back to you. It may. And you know one something, Miss O'Brien, 
more than anything else, nobody can take your memories from you, these glorious memories and the Thank history you. that you've created. You're a Hollywood legend and icon. Thank you so much. And I'm overwhelmed. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's wonderful to see you again, and I'm going to get up and yes. see these wonderful flowers and the beautiful flowers that have gone on the table that you had set. Thank you, you ever so game. much oh, you're for being welcome. so kind and, and generous with welcome. us. And it's great to see you again. I just adore you, and thank I've you. loved your films my entire life. Oh, and um, thank you so very, very much oh, for sharing your knowledge welcome. with us. It was wonderful to be here, and I will say goodbye. Let's and blow a kiss to the blow a kiss to the kids, shall we? All right, there you are. And it, we're doing this from this beautiful theater in Portland, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love being here. I love seeing you. Thank in you, this beautiful Thank theater. you so much. Remember, kids, today in Hollywood, a star will be born, and somewhere over Judy's <laughs> rainbow, there's a star waiting just for you. And Miss Margaret O'Brien and I are proof of the fact that dreams do come true in Hollywood. Right. And so never was, give up. Never give up. This was one of my dreams. Thank you so much, Miss O'Brien. Awesome. God bless. Thank you. And thank you again. And happy Valentine's thank Day. Thank you, and I can't miss having my Valentine's Yes, day. and you have your little beautiful uh, satchel. Oh, I wouldn't let that go, no. Right on. Oh, no, I'm a jewel. Oh, you're going to just love what's inside I that little love bag. That. Absolutely. All the best, thank my darling. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Career. I smell another Academy Award. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to head back into the theater now because they're showing me in St. Louis, and I'm going to do a little talk for the audience. How wonderful. How oh, wonderful. Okay. Good luck bye -bye, and enjoy now. the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you again, darling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hooray for Hollywood. Well, kids, there you have it. One of those miracles that do happen in Hollywood and dreams to come true. Cheers. Good luck with your careers. And remember, follow your dreams. Bye now.